The 7 Days to Die Alpha 19 update is finally out in experimental phase. Over the last few months we've been covering the A19 update in anticipation of its release. Now having the chance to finally get our hands on the latest version of this ambitious title, we wanted to do a different style of video. Hey guys, I'm Obi. And I'm Sobi, and in today's video we'll be talking about the 7 Days to Die Alpha 19 update and our top 5 most impactful changes to the game. Now in order to keep the video flowing, we will not be going over all the changes in each topic in great detail, but rather just touching on it and pushing forward. With that out of the way, the 7 Days to Die Alpha 19 update is chock full of new weapons, tools, and visuals. Let's limp into lighting and other visual changes. So we've touched on some of the lighting in our previous videos, but there's so much more than we had originally thought. The devs have changed the lighting in Alpha 19 to linear color space lighting. Basically what this means is that the lighting mirrors something we would see in real life, especially when it comes to different light sources and the blending of colors. This helps add to the realism in the overall immersion. Light passing through dense fog or even various lighting due to moon phases looks amazing and really helps to make the visuals pop. Other key visual updates are things like the snow trees and the bird trees making the empty space out in the world feel more full. Then of course are all the new POIs assets. We have talked about things like clothing racks and mannequins in our previous videos, but did we mention that there are over 150 new commercial assets including shelving, signs, gun racks, and display cases. And that's just to name a few. Add all those to just having revamped POIs, and the world now feels more real, and again there's a lot less empty space, especially when inside said POIs. To top it all off, the environmental textures have been updated to be able to blend in with the new lighting mechanics Alpha 19 has to offer. Shuffling on to zombies. So far, 10 of the zombies have received new HD models. We have mentioned a few in our earlier videos, but here are some more that we have not been able to see until now. Joe, Mo, and Yo have also received new skins along with our favorite so far, the Crawler. Probably one of the most immersive features when it comes to zombies would be the new head tracking. If you thought this game was creepy before, then you will be really impressed when the zombies start looking at you when you're trying to skirt around them. Also, quick note, all the wildlife and traders have head tracking as well. New ragdoll effects have been added to zombies too, making them even more unpredictable. When a zombie breaks through a door, sometimes it will stumble or even lunge towards you, and the same goes for when they drop from the ceiling. And for those that like to build over water, zombies can now swim. This makes the waters a hostile place to be. Overall, the zombies look and feel more real, and coming toe-to-toe -to -toe with them at night is even more crazy than it was before. Next up is the new HUD features. One of the best changes as far as gameplay goes is the new HUD features. Returning to the days of old, you are now again able to see your hunger and thirst bars directly from the main game screen. One of our biggest complaints was having to navigate to the player screen anytime we wanted to check up on our character. This problem has been eliminated, allowing us to keep pushing forward and not to have to constantly take time to check on our stats. Stumbling forward to the new on-screen sprite system. The new on-screen sprite system has had some mixed reviews. We, however, have really enjoyed the new system allowing you to see things like thrown spears and quest markers on screen, making things a little bit easier and it helps not to waste time. This also comes in handy for those who want to invest into the dig quests, as it shows the players where the item is buried after just digging around a bit. We will say, however, that we wish there were options to disable this or maybe disable certain aspects such as icons for bedrolls as an example. We have really enjoyed this new feature, but many have complained that they feel it's immersion breaking. Lastly is the overall progression system. Other than the skill system, 7 Days to Die has always felt short when it comes to player progression. The new progression system applies in almost every facet of the game. Enemies, players, quests, and loot have all been redesigned to flow more evenly and allow the game to play as it's meant to be. Even weapons and robotics have a three-tier system, allowing you to not only physically see but also feel the impact when it comes to gameplay. Of course, as you level up and spend more time in-game, the enemies will become more difficult as well. However, this has been reworked. No longer will you see higher level zombies spawn on the second Blood Moon. Web Weapons feel more balanced with actually having a beginning, middle, and end. And again, the world feels more balanced with your specific time in game. Even something as simple as adding a second tier ratchet and the third tier impact driver helps to make the player feel as if they've grown in knowledge of mechanics as they play through the game. We would have mentioned more of the weapons, but some are bugged like the new sniper rifle being fully decked out and not being able to look through the scope. Again, this is an experimental phase so we know these issues will be fixed soon. 7 Days to Die is finally getting the visual upgrade it's needed for a good while. 
well. We really like to feel immersed in the world that we are playing in, and this is a major step in the right direction. Those that are returning to the game will feel a major difference in world progression, and the undead feel more lifelike. It looks like Alpha 19 might just be shaping up to be one of the best updates the game has seen, and we are really excited to see what more is in store for us in the future. If you're a fan of our channel, then you know that we love 7 Days to Die. It's a game that helps us live out our childhood fantasy of surviving in a zombie infested world. While there has been some changes in the past that we did not agree with, the overall Alpha 19 update is definitely one that changes the game for the better. Hey guys, before we wrap things up, we did have a question for those that feel the game is not well optimized. We personally have felt a huge increase in frame rate when playing 7 Days to Die, and we wanted to know your opinion on the subject. Please let us know your experiences down in the comments. Also, we want to know what your favorite part or parts are and what you feel had the greatest impact on the overall game. We would like to invite you to join us on Discord as we have many discussions about 7 Days to Die and many other games. We are also trying to do a weekly meetup with our Discord community to either just talk about video games or just watch some funny videos. So if you're interested, you can join us by clicking the link down in the description. We also wanted to mention that we do more content than just 7 Days to Die, such as video game reviews. We actually just did a review on a new farming sim. If you're into games like Stardew Valley or Harvest Moon, please feel free to go check it out. This is Obi. This is Obi. Signing out. See you guys next time.